Distinguished colleagues, as our foreign uh, guest has not come, and we realized that just recently, I, I won't risk to do the speech for this doctor. But well, as a discussion, because uh, every mm, participant of the discussion could really choose the the topic of the discussion on his or her own, I decided to present to you a case study with the discussion of the issues that uh, the well our doctor should have presented. It was about immune therapy in the ovary, ovarian cancer. Actually. Uh, Checkpoint inhibitors uh, immune, uh, in immune therapy uh, researches are not that many of them, and these are basically relevant for the first phase. And uh, the effect of the treatment is a very good one for a certain group of patients. So I would like to um, present you our patient with the uh, serous adenocarcinoma of the ovaries. Uh, um, she does not smoke, she smokes, it was an extirpation of, well, with the total CD reduction, the effect was 100%. Uh, there was the, uh, like the, 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 the increase in markers, but there were no data on the progression for the um, ultrasound and then the arrest lymph nodes uh, so five months after the end of first line chemotherapy uh, we're not going to asking about the uh, well the chemotherapy because we we're not really we don't really want to discuss that that much I don't think there are too many oncogenicologists I just want to tell you that for this case, there could be various approaches to the treatment. This is still dis discussable uh, uh, question for everyone. But we decided to do monitoring because she wasn't really, uh, she wasn't really uh, mentioning anything. Uh, then uh, we see the marker growth. Uh, the progression on the lymph nodes started only. Uh, in April 2014, the marker was there. Uh, the uh, PET uh, PET data was the same, so we didn't treat her 20 months without treatment, without any bad signs. We uh, started Brissi A1 uh, test. We made Sanger sequencing. Uh, we did not find any mutations. This patient uh, found the amplification of HR2 that was there for a long period of time. Uh, that is usually there in the ovarian cancer, progesterone positive, KRAS, mutation, GFR, BRAF, all the uh, of those are negative. So the clinical case turned out to be that after five months of the pre 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 previous therapy, uh, so three, 13 months without, uh, 30 months, sorry, without the regression of the process. Then she went to Germany for radical surgeries for the, uh, you know, elimination of all the group of lymph nodes. Uh, well, there was uh, a small mistake, but she rejected treatment because she uh, felt quite good without any, you know, uh, any bad feelings. The histology, uh, a low histological adenocarcinoma, and for, you know, um, immunohistochemical, also the same expression P16, but without expression P53, and well, 60% of lymphocytes. Further on, the patient rejected the therapy. Uh, she uh, already uh, had some new lymph nodes in the, uh, you know, abdomen and after. Uh, reductional surgery, ninth month, nine months without treatment. 
Right now, the patient is already ready for a certain treatment because her tumor is growing, or it can be already seen in the ultrasound. But, well, honestly speaking, it's still uh, a question about how to treat her. It's still unclear what to do with her. 42 months from the preliminary therapy, 42 months with the constant progression without treatment because she was without any complaints. And what shall we do with her? How do we treat her? Well, we would like to actually ask this question to our foreign colleague. He's not here, but well, is there any choice? We can monitor her. We can start systemic chemo, uh, chemotherapy with a supporting therapy like PARP inhibitors or hormone therapy or well, uh, elastin, or we should start hormone therapy or herzeptin because she has amplifications of her two genes. So these are basically the questions for the audience. I would like to listen to your opinions. Uh, well, uh, she has uh, cirrhotic adenocarcinoma with a low level of malignancy, a high percentage of some, you know, alterations of repar reparation system. So that uh, probably a uh, PARP inhibitor will be the most effective, a loparib. Uh, homotherapy of the uh, adenocarcinoma. Uh, homotherapy is not very well studied with the tumor. There is less, uh, not much information about the homotherapy and its correlation with the expression of the receptors for this type of patient. I mean, receptor positive HER2 expression um, happens not that frequently in a low number of cases. Um, so whether prescribed herzeptin or not, well, it's still open question. She's smoking. She has a low um, and genetically unstable tumor, high level of TIL. Uh, well, so the question is what could be the best variant for her, uh, taking into consideration the huge number of her tests made. Well, immune tests probably we shall include her into some immune, you know, immune drug so the question for you what shall shall we do we plan to ask that to our audience i believe that your question is about the usage of immune therapy is the right question uh, right now uh, the research is undergoing where a huge number of various gynecological tumors uh, like uh, uterus well any cervical cancer they studied so if there is such opportunity i would use it honestly speaking i'm also thinking about that and i really think more about the inclusion of the patient into the trial immune therapy trial well thinking of the huge number of factors that really stand for the possible efficiency of immune therapy probably anyone have other opinions with Lana Yurina. Thank you very much for this really complex approach. And with your speech, you open new horizons for the new treatment of the ovarian cancer. But what do you think about the prescription of PARP inhibitors? For us right now, it's quite a, you know, an, an available option. With this patient, uh, she can really afford to buy this, uh, this stuff. We're discussing this with her, by the way, and uh, we analyzed her for mutations, somatic and hormonal mutations. She might have some other, you know, reparation system alterations where alaparib is also demonstrated its efficiency. There are some other variants, actually. We can uh, we could do some, you know, very detailed. Uh, research she could pay she can actually pay for everything she's uh, we can think about that as well mm, Svetlana Viktorovna we can study it uh, we can study her but you studied her already enough I believe that you have to to decide some treatment method well especially if she has an opportunity if she has an all every means to do that well if needed you could do well uh, an examination as well at the same time or after it any questions from the audience to Svetlana Viktorovna 
Uh, she well knows all the literature, every material. Of course, she is very well uh, oriented on the internet. She reads a lot and knows a lot. Uh, well, she does not really. Int she is not really interested in chemotherapy. She really votes for immune therapy. So we 